afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to our session, to our last session for the day. I hope you had a good and enjoyable hours in the afternoon. You had the time to go out, to explore the place, or anything else that uh, you, uh, you wanted to do, right? So now we are all refreshed, and we will start our session. Um, we, <coughs> we will start. The, the subject of this session this time is the importance of women's voices in creating a culture of peace. The main place perspective seen from within and without. It's a session that uh, has a combination of Middle Eastern speakers and sort of waste speakers. So uh, we will have a very uh, large vision of what is the Women's vision for the culture of peace in the Middle East. Uh, we will start <coughs> with a Tunisian lady. Her name is Mrs. Nezila Lamini. She unfortunately was not able to be with us, but she sent a recording. And we are going to watch the recording while at the same time she sent it in, uh, in French. <laughs> I would like to congratulate all your efforts to build a world of peace and serenity and to thank you warmly for your invitation. I am politician and activist, former Minister for Women, Family, Children and Senior in Tunisia from 2016-2020. Knight of the Order of the Republic, Order of a Postgraduate Degree from the Sorbonne in Paris, researcher in international humanitarian law, founding member of several NGOs, the latest of which is Mediterranean Children's Movement based in Malta. As an international expert, I chair the third Congress of the Arab Women's Commission and the United Nations Women's Commission, and I am a member of the Tunisian Women's Council. So as a vice president of the Peer Council for Equality between Women and Men and president of the steering committee for the development of the National Action Plan for the implementation of Resolution 1325, I organized an international conference on women, peace and security at the prestigious Sorbonne University. So I am proud to have been able to put my stamp on the organic law on the elimination of violence against women, a law adopted in 2017 in which I included political violence, raising the age of sexual maturity to 16 instead of 13, and the repeal of the circular prohibiting Tunisian women from marrying a Muslim man until he has converted to Islam despite some resistance. Like the Maputo Protocol of African Women's Rights and the Council of Europe's Lanzaro Convention on Sexual Violence Against Children. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, at, at the time when we are talking about peace, the situation in the world is worrying and no one is safe from conflict. War rages on ferocity, killing human lives, women and children, without the slightest respect for human rights charters or the Geneva Convention, which portrays international humanitarian law. 23 years after Resolution 1325, a landmark UN Security Council resolution on women, peace and security women and girls continue to bear the heavy burden of conflict and remain underrepresented in decisions concerning their needs and rights. Military operations affect women and girls differently, as they are often the ones caring for children, the sick and the elderly, which affect their ability to escape danger. 
in 2019, there were more than 40 million disabled people in the Arab world. Today, the situation is worse even catastrophic. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, in the Arab world, more and more women are receiving an education. All girls in the main region go to school, and more women go on to higher education. However, despite this progress, the Arab world is still at the bottom of the World Economic Forum, global ranking on gender disparities. So, how are these Kuwait, Kuwait sorry, is ranked 113th out of 142 countries. Yemen is ranked 142 and remain in last place. A position hold since 2006. So at the current rate, it will take almost 100 years to achieve the goal of gender equality in the world. So ladies and gentlemen, the participation of women in the United Nations peacekeeping operation is the same as seen a timid revolution between 1992 and 2019. Only 13% of negotiators, 6% of mediators, and 6% of secretaries to the world main In terms of support, barely 1% of funding from this fragile or conflict affected countries go to women's rights organizations. In 2020, the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights recorded 35 murders of women human rights defenders, journalists, and trade unionists in seven countries affected by a conflict. Intimidation and reprisal by state and non-state actors against those who cooperate with the UN remain high. Violation of women's rights significantly undermines global efforts to prevent conflicts and maintain peace. Many women, human rights defenders, journalists, lawyers, and judges around the world have been forced to flee or go into hiding, often after repeating treats. Many have lost or their source of income. They are also excluded from decision-making position that affect their life and prevent them from fully exercising their rights. So, for any kind of violation of the human of women and children is unacceptable and strongly condemnable. To conclude, after this picture, which I cannot find in Shwalaki, I call on all women leaders, as I did in Malta last week, to have the world to come together and demand with one voice an emergency meeting of the Security Council, a meeting made up of women to resolve conflict definitively and radically respecting international humanitarian law and condemning <coughs> genocide against civilians. Thank you for your attention and we hope for better days ahead. Thank you very much, Mrs. Uh, Davidi. Uh, she's not here, it's really a very commendable presentation about the situation of women persecution, but also the desire to um, stop all acts of violence against women. We now continue with the from the Middle East, Mala Kuka from Kuwait. Can, can you hear me also? <laughs> so she, Mrs. Salakuka, she's from Kuwait, and uh, she has been in the Ministry of Education, Information, Higher Education, Foreign Affairs, 
She has been very active and also in many NGOs. She is the founder uh, of uh, Women's Pioneer for Peace Initiative 1325. And she's such uh, in, in, in this capacity that she's speaking to us today. So I will give her the floor.
you know, this is a kind of request for the United Nations that every country should have a national plan for that. Uh, I just, uh, okay. Uh, in our mission, although I, I present the local and uh, the, region, the regional uh, uh, activities, in our mission, we seek to draft a roadmap for women involvement in peacemaking process beginning with ourselves, family, and ending with the decision makers through awareness, empowerment, and capacity building to contribute to the manifestation of women by new roles in the society. Therefore, we handed a broadcast program to the Ministry of Information about the women role in the United Nations. And uh, with the seasons of culture through uh, uh, about uh, peace, we started, um, uh, as I mentioned, so many um, uh, lectures, uh, I mentioned before, and it is done with a co uh, uh, kind of coordination with the NGOs in Kuwait. Uh, <coughs> For the global, the glo for the global uh, uh, achievement, we, um, as I, I mentioned, we were honored to work in with WFWD. <coughs> Through her umbrella, we attend many conferences uh, dealing with the peace and the, with the role of women in different parts, <coughs> and maybe the last or. Oh, not, not the least. Uh, we attend United Nations uh, Conference for Women, uh, 68, was it? Uh, we attend in New York for the council. Anyhow, yeah, the commission, yeah. Uh, also, we had very um, active and very uh, effective <coughs> conference in Kuwait, although it is very difficult for us to have foreigners to my country, even for conferences. But we did it. Uh, um, everyone mentioned that piece, it is a word, but it is very difficult with our world. Nowadays, we are having such a critical situation everywhere. In our hearts, we've been heartbroken about what's going on in Gaza, in, in Yemen, in Lebanon, in Cyprus, and Scott. We are looking forward to have this work spread all over. And I would like to mention that one of the names of my heart it is peace. So, peace about all of Thank you very much, Mrs. Sandakuka. Wonderful presentation. Yes, indeed. This is uh, the word to uh, see all around the world. So now.